From behind me, Surya cries out as I accidentally foil whatever plan she had to surprise me. Oh, there you are. You took so long, I ended up falling asleep waiting for you. I wasn't that late. I only had to stay after. Only had to stay after for five minutes at most. You just need to get more sleep. Maybe. Let's just get going. Alrighty. Have you finally thought of an apology? Yeah, I did. How does "sorry you're so irritable" sound? Hmm. Your real apology better be much better than that. I know. I know. That was honestly the best I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two girls. Of like Kamuko's hanging out with her boyfriend. Well, then maybe he just stole the name Kamuko. <laughs> so either, so either it's Dreams that, wild. so either it's that she doesn't exist or she does exist, but he likes to pretend like they're friends, or he just stole the name Kamuko because he heard over her I mean, the name in the Kamuko. Dream, her, in she, the her dream, name was, he was her. And yeah, in the dream, he was talking about how Sayori had a boyfriend. So I feel like he's switching the roles around. Maybe. He's the guy who hangs out with her. He's the guy who hangs out with with, Sayor, with Sayori. No, with with. With Kamiko, yeah, he's trying yes. to be. He's trying to be Kamiko's boy. He, they, yeah, he, because if if yeah. Kamiko hangs out with a guy, and then in the dream he said that Sayori's hanging oh, out so with some guy. Oh, so maybe in his yeah, in his dream they switch. He switches places with Kamiko's boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Two of us make it to the club room and find it to be completely empty, minus one other member. Looks like I don't have to apologize yet. <laughs> Yuri seems relieved to see the two of us walk in. Ah, um, so there is a meeting today. I was beginning to worry that today has been cancelled and I simply missed the text. Where is everyone? I'm not too sure. I came in and there didn't seem to be anyone here, so I just decided to wait. Late, not even two weeks in. What a president. Natsuki's absence has come, has come to be a somewhat expected at this point. Ever since last week, she's only joined a couple of meetings. Definitely makes the situation sting more. Sayori walks over to Yuri's desk while I find a place in the back. Two of them talk briefly about something before Sayori walks over to me. I'm going to go look for Monica. You keep Yuri company. Uh, that's going to be... a good chance to make friends. Good luck. <laughs> Sayori sits off with a smile and a thumbs up, leaving the two of us alone. Our gazes seem to naturally inch toward each other, but the moment we make eye contact, we both turn away in embarrassment. Despite being around each other for a week now, we're still completely unable to talk to each other. Stop looking at me, Yuri! Hey, stop it! <laughs> God, this is so nerve-wracking. The last time we spoke to each other was... Ah, just thinking about it makes my face twist up in embarrassment. <laughs> The two of us continuously go in to make conversation, but shaken out the moment we realize we're looking at each other. I begin to worry that this will go on until Sarah returns, but Yuri manages to break the curse and say something. So, we haven't spoken privately in a while. Yeah, we haven't. Guess we've been too busy with club activities. Mm hmm. I hope Monica turns up soon, or else we'll need to cancel today's meeting. <laughs> She's probably fine. Might have just caught and caught up by some friends. Kill me, kill me now! <laughs> Everything the two of us says feels extremely forced and robotic. Each of us simply ping-ponging off what was said right before. It's almost as bad as the excruciating silence before. Yet neither of us stopped the conversation. Or maybe even some paperwork for the club. I'm not terribly sure what work needs to go in, but I'd imagine it's quite a bit. <laughs> she did make me carry around and deliver a bunch of papers when I was helping her set up. I can only imagine the hell they put active clubs through. The elephant in the room only grows bigger and bigger with each passing word. I don't take the time to apologize now. I worry that the elephant will grow big enough to suffocate me every time I'm near Yuri. <laughs> I stand up and walk over towards Yuri's desk, placing a hand on the corner. Alright. Four. Three. Two. One. Hey, I'm really sorry about that time the library had a tunnel on my mind and I was weird today's state. I swear I wasn't trying to hit on you or anything. I managed to sort of spread out what's been bothering me this whole time in one continuous breath and the relief I feel is instantaneous. Carrie looks surprised by how easily I seem to mention the topic and her gaze remains glued to the floor as she pushes out her own response. It's all right. I figured you weren't that kind of person after our second club meeting. Sayori and Monica both seem to like you a fair bit. So I can't imagine you being like how I originally thought. 
She plays with her fingers as if she's performing some kind of secret ninja technique as she speaks. The blush on her face growing brighter and brighter, brighter with each word she articulates. Hearing her accept my apology feels as if a gigantic weight has been lifted off me, as I can practically feel the tension between us evaporate. The two of us make proper eye contact for the first time, and Yuri gives me a sincere smile, one that I can't help but return. In this moment, I'm reminded once again of her natural beauty, but that there's also a gentleness to Yuri. She's obviously not too big on people, and if I had to guess, finds her comfort in her own mind more than potential friends. In that regard, she's very much like me. Oh no, we're getting close to Yuri, you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> get close. The cycle with this MC is get close to girl. <laughs> it's first have horrible, like, you have horrible first impression with girl. Then start to get close to girl and start to like them. Then somehow finds a way to fuck it up. <laughs> yep. So now we just wait for him to fuck it up. I bet he's going to fuck it up. Probably. I will bet money on this too. <laughs> that he will fuck this up. <laughs> like, I will bet literal money that MC fucks this up. How much progress have you made in your book so far? Book? Oh god, our books! I've been so caught up on the Natsuki thing that I hadn't even made a dent in my book. Do I even have it with me? I think I just threw it on my desk and left it there. You didn't get to it? I suppose some people would be too busy. Do you have too much homework to focus on? Nah, I just- oh my god, I forgot about my homework too. Yuri giggles, completely amused by my scattered brain responses. You and Sayori seem very much alike. It's little wonder how you two became such great friends. You've got your story wrong. I'm like this because of Sayori. Her airheaded behavior starts to rub off on you after enough time. I bet five Monopoly dollars he'll fuck it up. <laughs> That's a lot of Monopoly dollars, man. Monopoly dollars. She seems to think something over in her- over- She seems to think something over in her head, I think, before continuing. That might be true, if you mind keeping this a secret. Yuri waves her hand towards me, indicating she has something she wishes to share privately. I lean in close. I've been forgetting to read mine, too. <gasps> Yuri, you naughty girl! <laughs> Yuri not reading your book? Yuri seems to be the most composed out of us, or at least the equal to Monica. Her being forgetful strikes me as something equivalent to Sayori controlling her appetite. An anomaly. But at the same time, it fills me with a sense of elation. It feels as if I've seen a side to Yuri that someone won usually. I'm usually much better at keeping track of time. But the moment I get home, I just get so lost in thought that when I come to, there's barely enough time to even sleep. Ah, uh, I get like that sometimes. Though I'm usually looking at some sort of form board and just get lost in a long chain of comments. Then all of a sudden, it's 4am and I've spent the day tracking fan art down, so at that point, I've got to trudge through the night. Yuri reaches down and begins to sift through her bag, quickly pulling out, presumably, her assigned book. Well, while we have the chance, I should try and make up for lost time. Taking a look at the book's cover, I quickly re recognize what Yuri chose. Sayori, huh? In her hand, she holds a copy of The Great Gatsby. Well, it was very hard to turn her down. She was very excited when she saw this in the basket and repeatedly told me about how good it was. I never read the story before, so I figure now was as good as time as any. I wish you told me more about it than just how good it is, though. I know next to nothing about its actual plot. Ah, I think I remember a small bit of it. Wasn't it like I'm a, a magician or something and his, like, love life? <laughs> Maybe not his love life. I, it's about a magician, though. <laughs> it's been a while since I've read The Great Gatsby, too. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's a book that they kind of, it's a book notoriously known for being forced to read in school. <laughs> we never actually had to read that. We only read like The Lightning Thief, Harry Potter, Holes. Because you're Those Canadian. Things. What? It's universal! I bet you didn't even read Mice and Men. We didn't, I don't know what that is. See? Canadians have weirder classics. It's fine, we read holes! You guys, like, don't even have, like, actual classics. Like, they didn't make us read Harry Potter. That was just in the fucking library. 
<laughs> no, yeah, we always had to read the first Harry Potter book. I wish they oh, made. I, w I wish they made us read a good book. They just made us <laughs> tell me about the rabbit zero. <laughs> no. They made us read. They made us read the first Harry Potter. They made us read the Lightning Thief. <laughs> I can't tell you about the rabbits, DJ. I'm sorry. <laughs> Then there are some other obscure books I don't remember. Zero likes reading. Well, color me pink. I'm shocked. I don't remember saying I liked reading. <laughs> I used to like reading. No, I actually, actually, I actually don't I have a problem. Like I actually don't. I don't read, but like, like I mostly only read manga, really. Like if I want to read, but I don't have a problem with reading. Like if I like back in school when we had to read or something, I never really minded it. I actually kind of liked it because I would get into because usually it's like. You'd get into the story that they would like make you want to read, that you'd be forced to read. Sometimes you got into it, like you're like, oh, this is boring, and then later you're like, oh shit, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> no, English class is over. <laughs> but but the next chapter. Oh, no. <laughs> the first ten minutes of silent reading time is over. It's like it's like at first it starts off and you're like, not oh, a kill a mockingbird isn't that good, and then later you're like, what's gonna happen <laughs> oh, in yeah, the trial? <laughs> 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 I also read um a lot of the Warrior Cats books. I have them. I actually don't. I've never read a book about cats or warriors. <laughs> you've never read the. You've never read a Warrior Cats book. No, it sounds like a book you and Lena like to read. Crow like said you, you read it too. Have you never seen those books? Like, have you seen I've them? I've heard in the of library? them. I don't. I've I don't read them. Okay. them. So because <laughs> they're very common. Elvis, I think Elvis has read it because he's right now shouting that you're based and saying, "Let's go." <laughs> Based Why did I say it like a warriors, robot? Yo. He is right now saying that you are based and that he is now shouting, let's go. I read the first one, read the second one. In the middle of reading the third one, I have all three of them. Okay. But, yeah. All right, all right, enough talking about books. So let, me, let me proceed with you. Let me, let me, let, let's see how MC fucks us up. Again, 20 bucks he fucks it up. <laughs> <laughs> This dude moves to New York to work as a banker in the city, and he ends up moving next to his this really rich dude named Gatsby. Had nothing to do with a magician. <laughs> <laughs> then the dude finds out Gatsby's actually deeply in love with the banker's cousin, and he ends up setting up a date between them, which is a problem because his cousin's already married, but it was about his love life. <laughs> ah. I was half right. The whole book is basically about the mystery behind Gatsby's life. Mostly his love life, though. Yuri gives a slight smile and a nod to show that she's listening. Seeing that winning smile it very encourages me to continue on, even if I've already explained the gist of the story. The book's got a lot of symbolic stuff too, like the prominent use of the color yellow to symbolize the optimistic presence Gatsby gives off, or how the weather is always foreshadowing the state of the characters, especially during the big confrontation between Tom and Gatsby during the... It's around that I realize I've said much more than I needed to and slowly silence myself. Yeah, don't spoil it, you fuck! <laughs> <laughs> My god! This MC, about to call him Spoiler MC. Spoiler MC. Spoiler MC. Can't believe Bug made Spoiler MC. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a good book, I think. It must be to rise such a frenzy out of you. Uh, no, you've got me all wrong. I was just trying to sound smart is all. I don't think it's as simple as that. Last week, when you said you weren't much a reader, I found it a bit strange you would agree to join a club like this. But when you got to talking just now, I think it's pretty clear you have the same amount of interest in storytelling as the rest of us. Perhaps you just didn't realize it yourself. N no, I swear it isn't all that deep. I'm not some super analytic reader. I didn't even catch any of those things until the teacher pointed them out. And yet you remembered them. Those storytelling devices must have some sort of impression on you, right? I guess. She seems to realize how flustered I am and starts to nervously laugh herself. I'm sorry, it's just... you reminded me a small bit of myself. It made me sort of happy. Huh? Nothing, never mind, just forget what I said. Yuri turns away and puts all her focus towards her book, shutting down any possible conversation. Still slightly confused, I decided to let go of what she said and said, and go reach into my pocket for my phone. As I begin to pull it out, a slight pang of thirst strikes me and I decide to go buy something from the vending machines. Yuri looks up and notices me leaving. Ah, uh, I'm going to get something to drink from the machines. Do you want something? No, but thanks for asking. With a nod, I step into the hallway and turn down the hall towards the nearest machine.
As I approach, I begin to make out the brief shadow of someone sitting on the bench being casted onto the walls. I turn the corner to find... I know it! Oh. When I said someone was on the bench, I was like, it's Natsuki. <laughs> mm-hmm. Natsuki, who's staring down at her feet with a deep concentration, as if they were the most interesting thing she's ever seen. <laughs> Immediately notices my footsteps. Oh, hello. <laughs> and my footsteps and looks up, revealing to me her flustered expression, which is quickly replaced with one of annoyance. At least try to hide your disappointment. So, is this what you've been ditching club for? What's it to you? Eesh. Last time I tried to be nice to you. The least you could do is tell Sayori you're too... Oh, no, that's me. The least you could do is tell Sayori you're too busy. She's been really upset since you started skipping. Imagining Sayori's concern seems to get through to her as she falls silent and looks back towards her feet with an even more strained expression. She looks sad enough to make me feel a little bad for bringing it up. I take a seat next to her and try to summon up the urge to make peace with my longtime rival, but something's stopping me. I'm not sure how to describe it, but I sort of feel out of place right now. Like I'm intruding on something. Ah, uh, this is just Yuri all over again. This is just Yuri all over again. I want to go home and... Do you need something? I kind of want to be alone right now. Hey, don't interrupt my, don't interrupt my monologues. My biggest piece of character development. But yeah, they do need something. They really are. <laughs> Please don't interrupt those monologues again, Natsuki. Natsuki doesn't look away from the floor, which makes it much easier to phrase in my head what I want to say. I wanted to apologize about last Friday. Sort of embarrassed ourselves in front of everyone and got heated about something stupid. That shouldn't have acted that way and stuff. It's a bit late to apologize, don't you think? Hey, at least I'm trying. All right, it's whatever. It was even the worst fight we've had. I'm a nervous laugh as I think back on some of me and Natsuki's fiercer online arguments. Our DMs would crush the heart of someone of someone pure-hearted like Yuri. I look towards her and notice that her stare remains glued to the ground. It's a little awkward just sitting here. So rough day, huh? Are you stupid, or do you think my attitude is supposed to be I inviting? Well, I thought that maybe you... Thought what? That I'd want to talk to you of all people? There's an increasing level of anger in her voice, and I begin trying to backpedal to avoid another fight so soon after my apology. No, but I was trying to... You're the last person ever want to... I'd ever want to talk. Especially about something like this. Word of advice? Trying to be some charismatic Casanova doesn't work with your neat appearance. Why are you getting so angry? I was just trying to lend an ear. You don't have to be a total bitch about it. The last of my restraint is being tested as the heat in my face reaches an unbearable level. You want to know why I'm angry? Stands up and looks me in the eye with a fiery glare that I hadn't seen even during our argument. Because I've just had one of the worst goddamn days of my life, and you come up to me and try to hand me a half-assed apology that you're clearly forced to give. Then you want to play the hero and get me to talk about my feelings when I'd already told you to piss off. You guys already, you guys always think you're some kind of knight in shining armor that I'll just fall into your hands and then jump into your beds. I apologize to you because I felt bad about blowing up at you. And you not only didn't apologize yourself, but started throwing accusations at me. Don't think you'd be a child and have a temper tantrum just because stuff's not going your way. And what guy would he be interested in someone like you anyways? I also just date another dude! Nasu begins to sh shiver with anger and I feel an increasing desire to punch the girl in front of me. She balls her hands to the fist and delivers a punch directly in my face. Or specifically in my left eye, which knocks me out of my back. See, I told you he was gonna get punched eventually. Ow! What the hell? I hit the cold tilting of the hallway and watch as Natsuki's face contorts into various forms of anger. You... She manages to get out a single word before a stream of tears makes its way down her face and she sprints off towards the stairs, leaving me on the floor. Extremely confused. I managed to pull myself to my feet and decided to give up on grabbing something to drink. I trudge my way back into the club room, clutching my eye in pain. Yuri looks up, most, most likely expecting Monica and Sayori to come through, and is shocked to see me walk in injured instead. 
S secretary what happened to your eye? Ah, oh, crap. Did she leave a bruise? Yuri puts away her book and rushes over to me, looking over my bruised eye with a motherly concern. Did you hit your head on the way here? This looks really bad. Nah, I just ran into our club's resident goblin and she socked me hard. Definitely a lot of power in that girl's right hook. Goblin? Do you mean that Natsuki did this to you? Yeah. Found her sitting on a bench and decided to ask her about why she was ditching club. It kind of got heated, as you can see. I guess she had a bad day. But even then, to punch you in the eye for trying to ask feels out of character for her feels out of character for her. Well, we've only really gotten to talk to her for like two days, so I guess you misjudged her. So far, she seems to just be a big bitch. <laughs> Yuri winces in my casual profanity, and I start to regret being so aggressive in my phrasing. Seems unsatisfied with my analysis of Natsuki, but doesn't look like she'll argue further. That aside, we should deal with the swelling. Hold on, give me a moment. Yuri returns to her desk and retrieves a metal container from her bag. She rushes past me and heads down the hall. I decide to take my old seat next to Yuri and wait for her to return, which doesn't take too long. She walks over to me and places the container against my eye, which I instantly realize is freezing cold and recoil violently. I'm sorry, I should have told you how cold it was. It's fine, just surprised me as all. Well. Yuri places the frigid cylinder against my eye again, and it isn't long before I start to feel the pain subside. This is the best I can do. I don't carry ice packs with me, and the nurse has no doubt locked up already, so... Don't worry about it so much, Yuri. Your concern alone is enough to make me feel better. Is that so? Yuri looks away from me as she continues to hold the makeshift ice pack in place. Ah, the shy side of her, to her is so adorable. Sorry about this. You seem like you really wanted to read your book. You're worrying too much. It's perfectly fine. As time ticks away, Yuri continues to look away from me. Occasionally looking back at looking back at me with the same nervous glancing the two of us practiced earlier. It's when I start to wonder why she's so embarrassed that I realize the intimacy of the situation the two of us are in. Where the fuck is Monica? Where the fuck is Sayori? <laughs> like, I'm more I, I, I'm more confused where Sayori is because it's like, okay, Monica could likely be busy. So I'm like, okay, so that means she's somewhere. But Sayori's looking for Monica. So if Sayori so if Sayori didn't find Monica, why didn't she just come back? <laughs> Or if she already did find Monica, why don't she just be like, okay, well, Monica's over there, so Monica's doing this, and then just still come back. Why didn't Sayori come back? <laughs> That's why I'm more like, where's Sayori? Unless she's still looking, in which case, my god. Sayori's dead. <laughs> Sayori went searching a little too far and got hit by a car. <laughs> Sorry. We are real close right now. Instead of handing the container herself, Yuri's the one holding it for me. But anyone passing by, we definitely look like some gross lovey-dovey couple. Uh, a flush slowly crawls across my face as, I, as my lack of experience causes my brain to lock up. I should say something to break this awkward tension, but... You read a lot, huh? Well, no shit she does! Yeah, they do. Most of my free time spent reading something new. Got anything you do besides that? Takes a moment to think. Something seems to pop up in her mind briefly, but she quickly disregards it. Um... Nothing, huh? It would seem so. I've just never really found much interest in anything else. Ever since I was young, I've almost always had my head in a book. I guess I'm weird, huh? During lunch, I sneak off to read in the courtyard, and... When I get home, I make a cup of tea to go along with my reading. It isn't too often that I wake up having fallen asleep in the middle of a page. That makes me seem a little boring to most people, though. Hearing all of this is kind of... sad. I can't help but see a bit of myself in her. It makes it feel very personal. Even if I can't quite think of the right words, I try my best to reassure, to reassure her. I'm not much better, honestly. I tend to spend most of my time online. It's rare not to catch me on my phone or computer. It's probably worse in my case, though. At least reading's a legitimate hobby. 
In the end, I guess they're both weird, huh? I awkwardly smile at Yuri. Yeah, I guess we are. That smile again. I start to feel really embarrassed. It's then when... Ah, I'm back! I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find Monica! There she is! <laughs> I guess she just couldn't find Monica. Every time! So he returns from her search and walks in on this peculiar scene straight from a rom-com. Her and Yuri's eyes immediately meet as she looks over the two of us with a complex expression. Oh, uh, you two sure have gotten close. It's not like that. He just, um... Yuri looks back to me as if I'm capable of saving the situation. I'm touched by her faith in me, but unfortunately, I doubt I'll do much better than she can. Nonetheless, I give him my best shot. I ended up getting a black eye while you were out, Sayori. Yuri was just helping me by holding this gold container to my eye. Why didn't you just hold it, hold it yourself, though? Did you get your arm injured, too? Sayori presses further with more logical reasoning than I'm used to from her, and I can't even begin to form a solid answer to her question. That's... A good question. <laughs> Why did Yuri hold the bottle for me? Ooh, because Yuri like me. Ooh. I still stand by, we're gonna fuck it up. Is she flirting with me? But we've only known each other for a week. It can't possibly be that. This is my overactive virgin mind trying to work me up. Y you said you couldn't find Monica? Yuri desperately tries to change the subject, and while Sayori doesn't look like she'll let the discussion go fully, she relents and moves on. Yeah, she wasn't in her classroom, or in the teacher's office, and none of her classmates seem to know where she was. It's like she disappeared. Did she even come to school today? Are you sure she isn't sick? She was. I saw her during lunch talking to some of her friends. As I say that, Yuri and Sayori's phones both go off and they pull them out to whatever notification they've received. Uh, it's a text in the group chat. Monica says that something important came up and she had to leave early. Aw, uh, meeting's canceled. Wait, that's a club group chat? <laughs> Alright, well then I guess there's no reason to hang around here anymore. Yeah, MC, there's a club group chat. Maybe if it weren't such a downer, you'd be invited to it. You're going to pack away her book and stands up. I think I'll start making my way home then. I hope your eye heals soon, F. Scott. F. Scott? Now my name's F. Scott. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, because of your speech earlier when I asked about... And secretary isn't really a name, so I thought... Here he seems to have said this accidentally and quickly tries to explain herself a little success. N never mind. I'll see you two next week. Goodbye. He walks quickly out of the club room, leaving me alone with the confused Sayori. Now wait, she forgot her water bottle. What was that about? Nothing. She just asked about the Great Gatsby earlier, since you made her read it. It's not like I forced her or anything. She even left her bottle here. Should we just run to return it to her? Eh, we can just give it back to her on Monday. Besides, that means I can keep using it for my eye. Your eye? Ah! What happened to your eye? <laughs> Slow on the uptake as always, Sayori. Suri seats herself in the same desk Gary was at while I tell her the story of my war scar. He listens quietly until I reach the end. That doesn't sound like Natsuki at all. There's no way she'd never there's no way she'd ever attack someone like that unless they attacked her first. Gary said the same thing. I don't know what to tell you. Girl knocked me clean off my feet and left me with this mess. Something must be going on. Maybe she's being bullied or failing a class or. Personally, I think I just think she's a done decent person. Wait, why am I censoring myself around Sayori? I even apologized to her about last about it. I even apologized to her about about last week, but she said it was half-assed. I should text her when I get home. Something's clearly wrong. Look, I don't really care. I'm just saying. So far, all she's done is fight with me and give me a bruise. There's little reason for me to like her. I guess so, but still. Sorry, it looks just as dissatisfied with my conclusion as Yuri was, and just like her, her friends are pushing further. Anyways, can you hand me the ice pack? I'm starting to feel the numbness wear off. Oh, here, I can hold it for you. 
The red grabs the container from the desk and hastily aims it towards my face, blocking me in the eye with his bottom. Ow! Careful, Sayori! Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... It's whatever. Just hand me the bottle. Grab the bottle from her hand and hold it to my eye on my own. Give me a minute, and we can start heading home, alright? Yeah, okay. If you don't mind, I'm going to grab something to drink from the vending machine really quick. Here. Pull out my wallet and hand her a few notes. You do not have any cash on hand, so... Oh, thanks! I'll be right back! Mm-hmm. Sarah rushes out the room, cash in hand, and turns towards the stairwell. Alright, there's machines over there, too. <clears throat> now we play a story. What kind of soda does he like? I say this to myself as I look over the selection of drinks in the machine. I'd planned to buy him something of my own cash, but since he gave me some money, I should at least use it. He drinks too much soda in a day, but this is the best apology I can think of. I should have been more careful. I was so caught up on him and Yuri that I... I shake my head and try to get rid of those... I try to rid myself of those thoughts. The more I think about it, the deeper the pit in my chest becomes. Just thinking about the scene between him and Yuri makes me... I'm doing it again. Clicking on one of the selections looks familiar to me. The machine gives out a click, a, a clink as the drink drops to the bottom. As I reach down and grab it, I hear a quiet noise coming from the stairs. I grab the drink and then look over towards the steps to find the source. It's Natsuki! <laughs> That's Natsuki? She seems to be crying, occasionally letting out sniffles and hiccups. Why does she say that out loud? That's Natsuki? And Natsuki's just like, Yes? <laughs> Why are you shouting? <laughs> Why are you shouting my name at me? <laughs> As I start to approach her, she grabs a small metal container that was lying next to her and takes a long sip. Should I go over there? From what he said, she seems to want to be alone right now. I think she just doesn't want to hang out with him. <laughs> Weighing the options, I decide that I should probably leave her alone and text her about this later, when she's calmed down. No! <laughs> or not. Besides, I want some time with him too. Oh my god. <laughs> Sayori, you greed! <laughs> uh Ah, oh, so it's another one of those things where it's like they all, where it's like Sayori and Yuri likes MC. Also, yeah, of course, Natsuki wouldn't want to do this. I seriously have to do this? Well, I'm not going to force you, but I'd really appreciate it if you participated. If you're going to be sincere, fine. Can I get a different cameraman? I don't want him to be staring at me with those gross eyes of his. I'm not exactly stoked about this either. But if you just read the teleprompter, you can do it a lot quicker. Whatever. Let's just do this already. Thanks, Natsuki. Good luck out there. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm Natsuki. Welcome to another edition of... Poet of the Day. And it's right on her flat chest. Whew, the text worked properly. Though I suppose there's nothing for it to bounce off of. Got something you want to say, jackass? Nope, not at all, gremlin. Sure, you're all just as excited to learn about old dead guys as I am, so let's just get this over with. And just like that, you've ruined the show's mission statement. Today's featured writer is the famous American poet, Robert Frost, whose legacy extends beyond that of, debatably, any other poet before him. She sounds so stuffy and professional. Who wrote this script? Yuri? Yes, she did. <laughs> now read. All right, all right. Robert Lee Frost was born on March 26th in 1874. His childhood was fairly ordinary, with the exception of his father passing away when he was young. So, you know, pretty standard 19th century childhood. Yeah, basically. <laughs> During his early high school days, he acquired a love of poetry, which inspired him to further pursue the craft among, upon admission to Dartmouth. After securing a publication in The Independent, Frost got full of himself and dropped out of college after a year to spend more time on poetry. Married a woman, had some kids, yada yada yada. I feel as if you're not reading the teleprompter. <laughs> well, no one wants to hear every detail about his life. Sorts of people who tune into the show are already stupid to- Already too stupid to know who Matsubasho is. You really think they care about how Frost became a, became a poultry farmer? I hardly care. 
I also hardly care about him becoming a poultry farmer, to be fair. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. Sheesh. Now you probably now you probably notice how we haven't mentioned anything about Frost's poems yet, aside from his first publication. That's because Frost's entire life has been one big failure after another. While he did manage, manage to secure a publishing during college, his poetry career hasn't gone anywhere since. Everyone who knew him told him constantly, you know you might not be cut out for this thing. And did he listen? Of course not, because you're sitting there while I'm forced to talk about it. <laughs> Around the turn of the century, Frost unpended his entire family and moved them across the Pacific to England. He thought people would be more receptive. Luckily, he wasn't wrong. Poet critics at the time fell in love with his works, and his popularity eventually made it back to America. So, after, once again, moving his family, he returned to America and found himself suddenly popular. His poems catered to the industrializing, to industrializing, the industrializing America, a job reading teleprompter, by depicting simple everyday occurrences through, um, col colloquial language and his personification as a wise sage. Colloquial is an adjective referring to the specific speaking dialect of a specific group of people. Also, you pronounce it colloquial. <laughs> Anyways. Frost's career hit its peak in 1960, when he was awarded a Congressional Gold Medal for Enriching American Culture. Which was pretty good timing, as Frost would pass away around three years later. Thank God! Don't be so disrespectful to the dead. Besides, it's not over yet. You have to finish with some closing thoughts. Hey, it's not my rule. Don't look at me like that. You want some thoughts? Fine! Robert Frost is a man who had little right trying to be a poet and caused trouble for his family because he refused to get realistic. The only reason he got popular at all was due to plain luck. If you try to retrace the steps yourself, you'll only find heartache and make yourself look like a jackass. But his tale is pretty inspiring to other creative types. And even if it isn't realistic, you'll find success just because you try really hard. His devotion to what he loved was, ad was admirable. Serves as a reminder that experiencing failures isn't damning proof of failure of further failure. Alright, I'm done. See you later. Oh, and thanks for watching. I know someone who looks like a jackass. Yeah, Monica. <laughs> Alright, but that's gonna do it for this episode. Things are getting interesting. We're at episode five now, and I think Bug said there were six. I think, right, Bug? There were six of in this demo. Clap, clap. I think there were six. I thought Bug there was seven. I think there's seven. It was it's six or seven. I can add six in. Okay, so there isn't six. There's five. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Whatever you're comfortable with. Honestly, if you want to put six in, then you can, but if you don't, that's also fine, because like I said, it doesn't really matter. This is actually a really good, like, thing that we can play, we can watch, and it's a really good, it's a really good mod to play until a good ending comes out, honestly. This is really nice, and I'm really enjoying it. So far, it is looking like an A tier. It's a really nice mod. But yeah, that is it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to download this for yourself, the link's in the description below. And yeah, six is one of the climaxes, so I'm worried about people liking. Oh, okay. I mean, you can just have five. We can just end it off after five. But yeah, this has been Zero. Peace. I'm a chef, chef